everybody. My name is Eric D. Johnson, also known by Shining right here in the city of Memphis, in the county of Chevrolet State, Tennessee, day and day. It's early Monday morning, December the 5th, 2022, the time, 1 11 a.m. First, say thank to all my family, my support for your continued encouragement. Continue, continue to keep myself employed right in the Memphis Tri State and continue to my education. More work on the continue to pursue my social skills, study, being a man, straight country, and my present time, take a break, going to school in the grand future. I'm going to be going back to more work on the continue to pursue my social skills, study, being a man, straight country, and my. Now, I'm going to start my Facebook Live. <coughs> Hello everybody, my name is Eric D. Johnson, also on the right channel, right in the city of Memphis, in the county of state of Tennessee, the day and day, it's early, Monday morning, December the 5th, 2022, the time, 1, 12 a.m., first day, thank you to all my family, my support for your continued current support, continue, continue to keep myself employed right in the Memphis, try to continue to further my education, moral college online, continue to pursue my social degree, study, being a military, come training, martyr, prime time, took a break and going to school, to bring me a free job, we'll be going back to moral college online, continue to pursue my social degree, study, being a military, come training, martyr. Now, what you see in front of you, anti-gang, anti-gnostic, anti-hazing, also, and versus heresies, translated mean against heresies, St. Irenaeus, the Bishop of Lyon, together with St. Ignatius, the Bishop of Antioch, together they wrote a five-volume book titled, and versus heresies, against heresy they refuted gnosticism because all because the catholic church had already refuted all those other heresies also saint athanasius the bishop of alexandria in the year 367 a.d and his 39th festival left easter left Ban all non-Christian writing. That Gnostic, those Gnostic theologians doing all this writing. Whatever they wrote, it was banned. St. Athanasius, Bishop of Alexander, together with all the other bishops in the Catholic Church, they went around and collected all that Gnostic writing and destroyed it. Now, a personal person took some copies of that Gnostic writing and some other documents wrapped it in some papyrus paper and put it in a jar and buried it in Nag Hammadi, Egypt. In 1945, the little farm boy over there in Nag Hammadi, Egypt, outside playing, found the jar that the Nag Hammadi Library, those documents, those banned non-Christian writing. That them Nazi theologians were writing had been found by the little farm boy playing outside in Nagamata, Egypt in 1945. The scholars at the college and university around the world, they found out about it. And they have been trying to misuse their information all around the world. Also, St. Epiphanes of Salome, the Bishop of Cyprus, Wrote a three-volume book titled Panorean Greek, Panorean Latin translated me Bread Basket. Scholars have also said that St. Epiphanes of Salome, Bishop of Cyprus, three-volume book is also adverse to heresies against heresies.
Now, esoteric. Let's say inside, internal, within, and also exoteric. External, outside, without. Now, Miriam Wilson Dictionary, as well as the Oscar Ina Dictionary. Now, when you break that esoteric down, the S O T E R I C. Now, exoteric, exoteric. See, all that esoteric, that Western esoteric, that Western mystery tradition. See, there's a lot of that inside, internal, within. And then on the other side, you have all that external, that exoteric, external, outside, without. What they call it, rejecting knowledge. That's what they call it, rejecting knowledge. See all that hidden knowledge, that's the esoteric. Then you got the public knowledge, that's the Exoteric. Rejecting knowledge. Rejecting knowledge.
the almighty vice lord four corner hustle the almighty black prince stone the almighty black disciple poppy the almighty mickey cole crack the blue fin black disciple the lord stone disciple 7-eleven g killer the history of the city of chicago Now, I'm a, I had the opportunity to take this opportunity to make my video. And so, uh, that's what I'm doing now, making my video. And so, uh, Like I said, I had the time, you know, I had the opportunity to be off this weekend, but I wanted to make sure I utilized the time that I had to get some few things straightened out, uh, you know, to take care of, and I'm still doing my video. Now, <clears throat> the history of the city of Chicago, uh, that's very serious, as you know, just like I showed, you know, uh, the almighty vice lord, the four corner hustler. The black, the almighty black Prince Stone, the almighty black disciple, Poppin, the almighty, you know, uh, Mickey Cole, Cracking, the blue fin, black disciple, the black disciple, the Lord Stone disciple, the history of the city of Chicago. That's very serious. But see, there's a lot of other people called them, you know, uh, who are aligned with one another.
the history of the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois, as well as the surrounding states, the state of Iowa, the state of Kentucky, the state of Missouri, the state of Wisconsin, the state of Minnesota, the state of Indiana, all the states that are surrounding, the well as it's close by, uh, the state of Michigan, right close by. So the history of the city of Chicago is very serious. It's important. See, American history, world history, the history of the city of Chicago. Now, that's my dad, Chester Johnson Jr. He passed away in 2012. And that's my mother, Annabelle Johnson. She's still alive. I have to, uh, I go and visit my mother every day. And that's my uncle, Uncle Lemuel Johnson. That's my dad's little brother. And uh, while I was incarcerated, my uncle Lemuel Johnson had been murdered. And I haven't forgotten. And I damn sure don't take it. And so, uh, the history of the city of Chicago is right there in front of me. You see, my, on my mama's side of the family, see, my granddad, my grandma, they came from Mississippi. Now, a lot of my mama's sisters and brothers, they had been born in Mississippi. Because grandma and granddad were living in Mississippi. Then left Mississippi and then moved to Memphis. You see, my mama, she the youngest of all the children. So she was born right here in the city of Memphis. You see, grandma and granddad were living right out there in North Memphis. Right there in the Klondike area. Went to Klondike Church of Christ. That's where me and my brother went. Klondike Church of Christ every Sunday. Grandma and granddad lived right around the corner. So that's what basically, you know, but see, the history of the city of Chicago. Now, on my dad's side, see, my dad, he was the oldest. Grandmama and granddad's children. Because see, grandmama and granddad, they were from Mississippi. And then they moved to Memphis. See, my dad, he was born right here in the city of Memphis. Then my uncle Lemmy, he was the second oldest of grandmama and granddad's children. Now, see, Grandma, she had another son, my Uncle Walter. He was the third of my grandmother's children. And then Grandma had a daughter on Virgin May. She, uh, she was living in, and see, Uncle Walter was living in Chicago up until the day he passed away. And then uh, on Virgin May, she was living in Chicago. That was she passed away. We living in Chicago. Now, Grandma had us another son, Jane Demo. He was living down in Mississippi when he passed away. Then Grandma had another son, uh, Uncle Burley Jr. And he was living in Chicago up until the day he passed away. See, the history of the city of Chicago is right there in front of you. It's right there in front of you. So. See, the history of the city of Chicago, people can tell you whatever they want. You hear a lot of things, like I, on my previous video, you be hearing a lot of these celebrity entertainers saying stuff on, on, in the music, you know, in the music. Or they might dress a certain way, you know, do certain things. It's because they, they have some kind of affiliation, some kind of association with a street gang, street organization. Now, you can, you can claim whatever you want, you know, 
You know, you can make up whatever you want. It's all kind of people walking around there, say whatever they want there, call themselves this and that, call themselves that. But we talking about the history of the city of Chicago. And so, see, before all, the, all this folk and my people, see, you go back into the history of the city of Chicago, you talking about back in the early 1900s, prohibition and all that. See, that's the history of the city of Chicago. That's the state of Illinois. That's, that's the history of America. Stuff you might see on television, you might see in a movie. For example, I know a lot of people, The Godfather, one, two, and three. I haven't seen number three yet, but I've seen one and two on more than one occasion. I haven't seen number Godfather three yet, but you know, eventually I'll get around to watching it. But see, the history of the city of Chicago, like, like the, what that TV show used to come on, The Untouchable. The history of the city of Chicago. A lot of the things that they were talking about was true. The Untouchables was true. Elliot Ness was true. A lot of the stuff they were talking about was true. It was real. Now they might they might fictionalize the story, but the person they were talking about, Elliot Ness and the Untouchables, they were telling the truth. That's the truth. In Chicago, that's the truth. You know, it's a lot of other things, you know. But a lot of times when they talk about the history of the city of Chicago, usually that would be the history of the city of Chicago is the street life, you know. That's usually, you know, that's what the city of Chicago is known for. You know, you can't be known for the Chicago Cubs or, you know, the Chicago Bulls and uh, the Chicago Bears. Well, you know, people, sports fans, whatever, but that's usually not what the city of Chicago is known for. The city of Chicago got a reputation. The street life. The street life. And it's serious. It's life or death. It's, you either live or die. And people do whatever they got to do to live, including kill. You know. But hey, that's that's the life. That hey, that's that's the city of Chicago, as well as the surrounding states. Cause see, being so close to the city of Chicago, to the state of Illinois, you know, whatever going on in Chicago, that was going on in Missouri, that was going on even in Kentucky, the state of Indiana, whatever you see in Chicago, that's what you're gonna see over in Indiana. You're gonna see the same thing. In, Mil in Wisconsin, the same thing. Whatever you see going on in Chicago is going to be the same thing in the state of Wisconsin. The state of Minnesota is right next door. Whatever you see going on in Chicago, you go to Minnesota, you're going to see the same thing. You know, it, it, you can't get around. The state of Iowa is going to be the same thing. You, you, you close. You close by. Whatever you see in Chicago, you're going to see the same thing in the state of Iowa because you're close. You're close by. Then you get further away. But see, you, you, you be in the city of Memphis, you you see some things like like in Chicago, but this is not Chicago. But it'll be like Chicago. We're not as close. But the thing that you see in Chicago is down here. You know, it's down here. It's in, it's in New Orleans. You know, it's, it's in Alabama, it's in Texas. Whatever you see in Chicago, you go to the state of Texas. It's gonna be the same. You gonna it's gonna be like what you see in Chicago. But if you're not in Chicago, you go to Oklahoma, you go to Arizona, you go to Colorado, you go to Utah. It's gonna be something that you see. It's gonna be like what you see in Chicago, but it's not Chicago. You'll hear something, just like you hear something on the radio. You'll be walking around on the street. You'll hear somebody say something. You might see somebody dressed a certain way. You know, you might see a tattoo. See, you're not in Chicago, but it'll be something that you may have seen in Chicago that you might see 
in Seattle, Washington. You might see it in North and South Dakota. See? But it's not Chicago. But in Montana, out of nowhere, you be like, you're not in Chicago, but it'll be something that you, but see, that, the history of the city of Chicago, even recently, what you've been hearing recently, you've been hearing something about on the East Coast. Talking about in the city of New York, what they said, you heard what you hear. You heard something about some choos and woos. You heard something about some gangster disciple on the East Coast in New York. The choos and the woos. Hmm. Huh. The so-called black gangster new breeze and the insane gangster the site. But see, you're not in Chicago, but something that you see in Chicago or, you know, that might be associated, affiliated with something that, that you see or hear in Chicago, you see and hear somewhere else over in Arkansas. You know? Not in Chicago, but you know, be down in Mississippi somewhere. You know, and not in Chicago, but but see the history of the city of Chicago could see a lot of people, family, African, you know, black slash African American, and uh, living. In Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama, Texas, Oklahoma, so on and so forth. Arkansas. So. Leaving the South. Going North. Not just to the city of Chicago, but just going North. Because there was a lot of industrialization in these Northern cities. And so a lot of black slash African American left the South left the cotton fields, left sharecropping to work in these factories, in these plants. And so, and this is Chicago, one of those places that a lot of people went. And a lot of, you know, the white Americans European Americans uh, were living in the state of Illinois, the city of Chicago. Like we just got to be talking about how all this prohibition and all this stuff was going on. Well, see, black slash African American really just not saying one involved in. Uh, bootlegging, as they call it, because there was prohibition in the early 1900s, you know, and then after they ended uh, prohibition, the uh, those, those who were involved in that still were involved in racketeering and uh, you know, other activities to, uh, you know, raise money, you know, to raise money. The street life, gambling is a big, big thing, legal or and illegal. And, you know, a lot of that. And so, uh, but when you're talking about the history of the city of Chicago, what you're talking about, see, this was before the folks and the my people. This was before the folks and the my people. And, I mean, you know, it's important. See, when you're talking about the history of the city of Chicago, it's important to bring it up, to point this out, 
before the folks and the white, you know, and, and before the folks and the my people see all this uh, stuff before the folks and the my people. And how a lot of black slash African Americans, including a lot of Hispanic Latino, were living in the city of Chicago as well as whites. And it's a possibility that it was a Asian American, probably, you know, it's possible, I mean, you know. But the dump, you know, the majority of the people, whites, blacks, Hispanic, Latino, the majority. It you know, it could have been a percentage, a very probably a small percentage of Asian Pacific Islanders who could have been living somewhere in the state of Illinois, the city of Chicago. You know, the history of the city of Chicago. The street life. And so it's important. It's important because people try to do things today and they try to take what other people did just like people who were related to me, my, my, my dad and my mom and my grandma, my granddad on my mama and dad's side. See, things that they did. And what you see today, and some a lot of other people, family members, what they said or did then is what you see today. And so, all that so-called supreme gangster stuff. See, some people, it was even before then, were trying to go against other people. We're trying to go against other people. And see, a lot of people knew the, the things that those people had done, and then they'll try to run and hide. See, then you try to come up to Chicago, and then there were people looking for you. Because of what you had done, they wanted to kill you. They, you know, they wanted to get you back. You know, and you're trying to run, trying to hide. And, you know, that was a problem. And then, uh, but when it comes to the, the things like before the folks in the MIP, you know, like I said, he had a lot of white uh, who was already gangs and things, the white gangs and things like this. And, uh, you know, then Hispanic Latinos were coming to the city of Chicago. A lot, a lot of the numbers, you know, a lot of people were coming to the city of Chicago, as well as black slash African American coming to the city of Chicago. So, you had all this, you know, you, uh, the 14th Street Clover and uh, the Imperial Chapters. And so uh, there was a lot of things that had been done, but then you had, you know, 14th Street Clover, and then from the 14th Street Clover, you had, came the Vice Lord. You know, but then, you know, those athletic clubs. That was around, you know. There's a lot of athletic clubs as well, and a lot of the vice lords, you know, they know the history of the city of Chicago. They know about these athletic clubs, and uh, you know, and a lot of white guys, you know, the white guys, and, uh, 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 the Simon City Royals, and uh, the Satan Disciples, and uh, the C Notes, and the Deuces. They they know they familiar with the history of the city of Chicago. They know about all these athletic clubs and who was members of that those clubs, and they tried to move around, try to hide, you know, try to run and hide, whatever, because they know there were people coming up to the city of Chicago, and people were, it was, this was a truth, it were people looking for people, and you know, and, and was trying to come up to the city of Chicago, looking around, trying to find people. So a lot of the white guys, they they know what it is you're talking about, the Almighty Gay Lord, they know what you're talking about, you know. 
you know, Shy West, they know exactly what you're talking about. It, it, that was a that was that was a serious thing. That was a that was a real problem. It was people doing things in other places. Or, you know, people accusing people of doing, you know, committing crimes against their family and trying to run and hide. And so it was people trying to make, you know, trying to find people because they'll try to hide in a crowd in Chicago, in the state of Illinois. And so a lot of the white guys in Chicago, they know what you're talking about. They know, they, you know, this is not, you know, they know exactly what you're talking about. That, that was a serious thing, you know. People had done something, and some other people were, were looking for them. And so, talking about the vice lords and, and, and you know Evan Pepelo Perry, and and uh, all the other Bobby Gore, and you know all the other uh, members of you know the Fourteenth Street Clothes who who formed the vice lords. And then you had you know. Uh, uh, the Black Prince Stone, you know, the Black, Black, uh, Black Stone, Jeff Ford, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, Eugene Harrison was in a, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, and uh, was in another group, and they was, it was really, you know, uh, a rivalry, you know. And so one, you know, eventually, Jeff Ford and his Eugene Harrison uh, formed an alliance after, you know, having a rivalry, formed an alliance. But see, the thing about Jeff Ford is that, see, some of his family members was on the west side of Chicago. They were members of the Vice Lords. And some of the other members who were friends with Jeff Ford. Some of them had family members who were on the west side of Chicago who were vice lords. And so, but, you know, the Black Prince Stone, you know, Black Peace Stone, you know, the Black Stone uh, came together and, you know, formed an alliance, Jeff Ford and Eugene Harrison. So, now the Black Disciple, as you know, how the black disciples on the south side of Chicago, King David Barsdale, the little kids, him and some more little kids, form. The devil's divots and all that, you know, they had all kind of black disciples, you know. But King David Boss there, you know, he had some old sisters and brothers, and you know, they was, and so uh, formed the black disciples. And, and, and uh, but then there was this other group, the Supreme Gangsters, that was having a lot of uh, wars with the Black Disciples. And so, uh, you know, they had tried to, you know, the Black Disciples, they tried to kill this Larry Hoover guy on numerous occasions. And uh, eventually, you know, formed an alliance. You know, became the Black Disciple became the Black Gangster Disciple. It didn't last long. You know, uh, King David Bosdell had got shot by some little kids, and the injury that he had from the, you know the gunshot wound. Uh, End of his life, and uh, then they had this other group, you know, uh, the Royal Family. Now, the history of the city is called the Vice Lord, they know what you're talking about, 
when you talk about the royal family, they know every, they identified all the, who was the vice lord that was uh, involved with that royal family. And, and then from the royal family came the black gangsters. Then from the black gangster came the new breed out on the street. And so uh, when it comes to the history of the city of Chicago, see who the individuals were now, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Spoon, Spoony, Spoony Black. Now, this guy was a, was in some kind of group called a, a, the Goon Squad. Pretty much, you know, street hustling, you know, and so on, stuff like that. And so, see, that's the reason why you have to know the history of the city of Chicago. See, you talking about the royal family, that's one thing. Then you talk about the black gangsters. That's that's another thing. Then you talk about the new breed. That's another thing. So you have to know the history of the city of Chicago, because you talking about all kind of you, all the individuals and stuff like that. You see, it's important. You, you know, uh, the, the spoon of black. You know, eventually one day, uh, while he was incarcerated, you know, some some guys in the jail tried to kill him. That, that, that's true. They tried to kill this guy. They tried to kill Spoon of Black. You know, he got stabbed. Numer you no, know, he got multiple stab wounds. They tried to kill that guy. Yeah, they did. You know, he was in intensive care or whatever, you know, but the point is that they tried to kill him. You know, you know. And so, uh, but see, you got these groups, you know what I'm saying? When you talking about the folks in the MIP, you know, like the boss pimps and, and you know, the, uh, the man black soul, you know, or the, you know the man black soul, the Latin soul, so so on so forth. You know the folks in the map people. See all these different groups, you know, and all these different individuals and how it all came about, and and what they was involved in and all that. Who they who they friends with, who and all that. You know, see, and, and, and then what you see today, and so. It's important that you be aware of the history of the city of Chicago. Cause see, you hear something like I said, like I was, I was, I was really, you know, sometimes like I said, like I said once before, sometimes I could say something, and then when I say it, it may come out, it may sound humorous, you know, you know, but I was really being serious. I was really being serious. You know, sometimes you hear stuff on the radio. Or, you know, on a YouTube video, you know, you know, on TV or whatever. You can hear some some kind of song. It ain't gotta be a rap song, it could be R and B. It could be whatever. You know, it could be some rock and roll or or some heavy metal or whatever. It could be all kind of it could be some folk music, whatever. But sometimes the people, the artists, this plant this the musician or the artist for some parent read, they trying to send some kind of message. You know? They trying to send some kind of message in the music. You know, it can it can be political. It can be religious. They trying to send, you know, they trying to say something in the music. They trying to identify themselves as something. You know? The, you know, sometimes it can you know it don't necessarily be the lyric. Sometimes they'll make a, a video. And in the video, they'll do certain things in the video to try to convey a certain message. Now, I'm not finna get into that gay and lesbian stuff. They do that too in music. They do that too. They get it. Hey. But the point is this. When you hear music, see, the history of the city of Chicago, you hear so many people saying things and repeating and then the way they dress and you see tattoos. You see colors like red and blue and green and you see gold. You see, uh, you know, you see all kind of white. You see all kind of colors. Black. You know, you see all it. And it, to some organization, street gang, it means this or it means that. You know. And so, it's important that you 
know the history of the city of Chicago. It's important. It's life or death. You know. And when you see people putting their lives, you know, like I say, life or death, think about how many people in in the jail incarcerated because the gang. Then well, I don't even have to get into the people that already died on the street, got killed. But it's important. The history of the city of Chicago is important. Because, see, that's how you know. Sometimes you can look around in the cities all around this country. If you ever, if you had a even look in the graveyard, the history of the city of Chicago is the reason why. Now, I'm not, no, don't be confused when you hear me say it, but see, it's that you might not be in Chicago, but like in Chicago, the people that you see, they got killed on the streets, just like in Texas, in the city of Memphis, here in the state of Tennessee, Nashville, Chattanooga, Knoxville, some of the other parts of the state of Tennessee, go over to Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas, West Memphis, Arkansas, Jonesboro, Arkansas, Marion, Arkansas. You go somewhere in Arkansas, I guarantee you, you ain't got to look on the street, but if you had not looked in the graveyard, you may not be in Chicago, but you look over there in the graveyard, somebody got killed, not they ain't dying, natural cause, they got killed. It was because of the history of the city of Chicago. That's what it was because. You go down to Mississippi, you look on the graveyard, it'll be the same thing. It's not the people that's walking around that's still alive. Look at the people that they got killed. They, they got killed. And the reason why they got killed, because the city of Chicago. They was affiliated, they was associated with some kind of gang, some kind of street organization in Chicago. You go to Alabama, it'll be the same thing. You ain't got to look at the people that's still alive. Look, just look over there in the graveyard. You go to Mobile, Alabama. You go to Montgomery, Alabama. Birmingham, Alabama. Selma, Alabama. You go to Alabama, Pier. It's going to be somebody over there in that graveyard because the history of the city of Chicago. Somebody over there in the graveyard got killed because they affiliated so with some kind of gang in Chicago. You're not in Chicago, but like in Chicago, they did the same stuff that they were doing in Chicago, they were doing in Alabama. You see, and then so on and so forth, you gone, you Oklahoma, Nebraska, North Dakota, South Dakota, oh yeah, Montana, Wyoming, oh yeah, it's spread, oh yeah, I know, oh man, them little white guy, I guarantee, I guarantee, they might not, now, I know, it might not be as You know, like in Chicago, but I guarantee them little white guys and them little white girls, I guarantee I'll f you'll find somebody walking around talking about they all might. And then on the other side, I guarantee I wouldn't be surprised somebody walking around talking about some GD. But see, when you know the history of the city of Chicago, see, that's the reason why I talk about the history of the city of Chicago. Because see, when you go back, just like to Al Capone and all them, see, them Europeans came over from Europe. See, in the history of the city of Chicago, 
See, it's something that you don't never overlook. Is the Catholic Church. Don't never overlook the Catholic Church. In any part of American history, people, especially in the history of the city of Chicago, in the state of Illinois, you're talking about people came over from Europe and immigrated to America. A lot of people that came over were Catholics. A lot of people came over. It, it may have been the Protestants that came over after the Counter-Reformation. After the Counter-Reformation, a lot of those white Europeans <coughs> that came over, Protestant. You know, some of those people that was listening to Martin Luther, the heretic. After the Counter-Reformation, some a lot of people were on the run. They were trying to run from the Holy Roman Empire after the Counter-Reformation. And so, like I said, the history of the city of Chicago, one of the things that you don't never overlook and is the Catholics that came over from Europe, like Irish Catholics. Just Catholics in general, but you no know, different country that they came from. The Irish, the Italians, French, Spanish, Portuguese. Oh yeah, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, because of the movie. And, and which is true, you know, a lot of Italians, Italo Albanians came over. Catholic Church, you know, Catholic. And from other parts of Europe, you know, Hungarians came over, Catholics. A lot of the uh, people from Poland came over, Catholics. You know, there was a lot of a lot of people in general, you know, who were Catholics, came from Europe, came to America. A lot. And a lot of them ended up on the East Coast in other parts of America. But a lot of people, and a lot of people from Europe who were Catholics, where they ended up, they ended up in Chicago, the state of Illinois, as well as surrounding states. In the history of the city of Chicago, that's one thing, that's one, one other thing that you should never overlook is the Catholic Church. Don't never overlook the Catholic Church because a lot of the people that you call white European American living in Chicago at that you know, early 19th, they were Catholics. They were Catholics. You talking about Al Capone and all them. A lot of those Italian people who came over, they were Catholics. The Irish who came over, they were Catholics. A lot of the Polish who came over, they were Catholics, and they were living in Chicago. A lot of the Hungarians, they came over, they were Catholics. A lot of people who came over from Europe were Catholics. You can't overlook that because that's a different. You're not a Protestant, first of all, so your, your concept of Christianity is different. Your values are different. Because first of all, you say you're a Protestant to the Catholics. That ain't really saying anything. They had already showed you during the Counter-Reformation that you ain't nobody. And that whoever this Martin Luther, he was a heretic. That even today, you take whatever he said, what you gonna say about Martin Luther today? That he's a heretic. He ain't nobody. He ain't nobody. And so the Catholic Church is right. So you, you can't overlook the Catholic Church in the history of the city of Chicago. See, it's important. See, when I, when I make my video, see, these are things I have to deal with out here in the community, in the street. 
And when you try to lie, when you try to lie, see, this is what I make, make an issue about. See, don't try to lie. Because that's what people, like, for example, the Supreme Gangs, you try to lie. See, that's just like the so-called goon squad. Later came the black gangster. See, you try to lie. And then the new breed, oh, you try to lie. See, when you try to use the nag of my library to lie, call yourself, going to try to walk your ass around and try to be a, call yourself a Gnostic. See, you trying to lie. See, the Catholic Church had already refuted Gnosticism as well as those other heresies. You see, your ignorant ass not being educated, not knowing about and versus how races not knowing about the 39th festival letter, Easter letter, and as well as you didn't know about the Panarin. So you walking your ass around claiming that somebody in the sorority and a fraternity told you something out on the street, on the street corner, and you listening to what some fool told you on the street corner. Made a fool out of you, and now you a damn fool. And you're going to get your ass killed. That's what's going to happen to you. You're going to get your ass killed. See, it ain't no such thing as using or misusing information. Such as the name of my library. Because when you see what it is, you ain't saying nothing. That's what it means to refute. You prove that it was false. It's just like talking about the Demiurge. See, a lot of them white guys, like Shy West, the Almighty Gay Lord, and then some of them other guys, I mean, you know, you know and then on the folks, the Simon City Royals, the Deuces, uh, the C Notes, some of the ones that, you know, for me, you know, that I know, uh, you, know like, you know, 12 Street Player. And uh, the same disciple, you know. Uh, then you got some of these guys that, that's what they call the independent, like the the popes, the north side, south side popes, and what the Nike boys, you know, some some of them guys, and he, you know, some of them white guys, they've been around a while, they've been around too, but see, some of them guys. They they not necessarily affiliated with the folks in my people, but see them white people, them white guys know each other. See that what I've been saying, you know, they know each other. Cause see when you go back into the history of the city, see some of them guys we used to be deuces. Some of them Simon City Royal, some of them Twelve Street players, some of them Almighty Gay Lords and Stone Freaks. See, they know who them guys is. The North Side Popes and the South Side Popes. They know who them guys is. The Nike Boys. They know who them guys is. They know who them, them guys and some of them white women that's walking around. They know who they are. You see what I'm saying? See, they, they all know. Because shit, hell. The white guys, they were living in, in all over Chicago. It was only certain places in Chicago that, that the blacks slash African-American live. And then the Hispanic Latino, 
Some of them African American or black. You just speak Spanish. I mean, where you gonna live? So when it comes to the white guys, they know each other. They went to jail with each other and all that kind of stuff. Just like the it was all this uh the Aryan Nation, the Aryan Brotherhood, and all that stuff. You be up in the jail in the federal prison in the federal prison somewhere. Some of them guys know each other. They, I mean, you know, they they know each other. And so when you talking about the demiurge, some of these white guys, they had education, whereas you didn't. Whereas the black slash African American didn't. Then you had all these whites who was at the University of Chicago, University of Illinois, and so on and so forth. What they call it, other one? Uh, Southern Illinois. Yeah, Southern Illinois. I, I can't name all them schools in the state of Illinois. But, you know, DePaul. Well, see, the white people had been going to school and college. And then over there in the state of Indiana, uh, Notre Dame, right over there in the state of Indiana, the whites could go to school, but the black slash African Americans couldn't. So whatever you talking about, about some narcissism, they had been talking about that. Neoplatonism, the Demiurge. The Neoplatonists got one verse, but then came along the Gnostic. They they turned around and said that the Demiurge was evil. They, I mean, you know, that's what they said. And then you get all these so-called black slash African American in the, the so-called sorority fraternity all on the street, on the street corner, talking about the nag mind library. You ain't saying nothing. You're not talking about it. Then you're talking about some esotericism, exotericism, esotericism, hidden knowledge, exotericism, public knowledge. You're not saying anything that the Catholic Church hasn't already refuted. They proved that it was false. Whatever you're trying to claim about some inside with this esoteric and on the exoteric side, whatever you're trying to claim about some outside, some external, the Catholic Church already know what it means. They know where its origin came from. They know where it came from. And you're not going to influence anybody to listen. So what you do? You started a game trying to be violent. Just like what that movie they call that movie. Uh, the Gangs of New York. The Five Point Gang. Who was them people that did that? What they do that for? See, them the Protestants. Trying to be violent. Because one nobody, you ain't going to get nobody to listen. With all these colleges and universities, you couldn't even get the whites to listen. So what you always do? Be violent. Slavery. You be violent. You try to use violence to persuade people to listen. See, then with the vice lord, going to have to always make it clear. In the Black Prince Stone. The Four Corner Hustle. See. The Black Disciples. The Mickey Cole. They're going to have to make it clear. But with all this Black slash African American. You can't. Hey, there ain't no coming up to Chicago no more. It ain't no. Oh, uh, no. And talking about that Supreme Gangster. And talking about you going to be a gangster disciple. Talking about you going to be a black gangster? No. And talking about some insane gangster? Like, no. Because see, I'm going to be walking around making sure it be payback. And then it's going to be some more people doing the same damn thing I'm doing. Making damn sure it be payback. <coughs> Excuse me. Including a lot of them white people. 
Because there's a lot of things you did that's wrong to them. And then you got all the Hispanic Latino gangs, the La Razas and the Latin Eagles, the Latin Kings and Queens, the Latin, the uh, Maniac Latin Disciples. See, it ain't no, see, when you get past all this line and you identify, you expose, see, when you expose the sorority and the fraternity for trying to use the nag of my library, for trying to misuse the nag of my library, talking about some Gnosticism, and then out on the street corner, talking about the Demiurge. Man, you ain't you ain't no smart son of a gun. The Neo Plate. Look, all that stuff you trying to claim about some Freemasonry, the Order of the Eastern Star, the occult, and trying, you know, that occult you trying to do, that sex cult, trying to, they ain't no sex. Look, them ancient people, this ain't no secret. This ain't no secret. And did me saying something about it is not to be comical or humorous or or to try to make people not listen. No, what I'm trying to say, this is what people actually did. They engaged in anal sex. Then they did, and they tried to make it sound it was some kind of initiation involved. Because some of the women, the women were being done that way. Because see, doing up here, there wasn't no such thing as picking up a stick off the ground and then talking about no one. No, it wasn't. See, but what they were talking about, the men were doing stuff with the women. And what their intent was. It wasn't like a husband and wife was, no, it was, it was stuff that men did to the women because they were being initiated. That was just one way people got you to listen. It's, it's rape. The women, they scared, they afraid. And what they ain't no sex. And then talking about a man, the men, it wasn't just no no so so such so, 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 so thing as no being gay and being accepted. People treated people who were gay like they do today. You be shunned. You think you finna walk around and, and admit to other people that you were. A homosexual? I mean, you can't lump everybody in the same group. Some society in ancient times, they had their own culture and customs. Some things like that. That wasn't normal. Then you had people who got into war. And if you were the loser, what did people do to the people who lost? The war. What you think they did? Some people got raped. The women. What about the men? They did the same thing to them. Instead of killing you, they raped you. Ain't no sex. See, that was that Gnosticism. And that demiurge, it was people who that was they way that's that was their culture, their custom. This so-called Plato and the people who was before him. See, this stuff had been passed down, and they had been constantly, constantly talking about this, this stuff about where we come from. 
and about this supreme being. So, this is, see, when you get past all that line, see, this is really why I say to the people in Chicago, that, see, that supreme gangster mess, that's over. It ain't no such thing claiming that, talking about you a gangster site. And talking about some black gangster new breed, and then talking about some insane. Ain't no way. You ain't finna tell nobody about no damn narcissist. That's the reason why I do what I do. And you damn sure ain't finna walk around talking about no damn demi I don't know, street corner. Never again. Because the vice lord gonna hear me. And they gonna hear me. And when they hear me, they ain't finna hear you. They gonna kill you. Them black prince don't, they don't see you. They know I'm, when I leave my video, them black prince don't, they hear every damn thing that I say. You ain't gonna never get away with that. Never. Again. Never. Them black disciples, they'll be walking around, you ain't gonna never get away. Never. Them folk on the hustle, they G, they GD killers. Them folk on the hustle, they ain't finna, hell no. And when they when them black disciples see them folk on the hustle, no, hell no. They know damn well them folk on the hustle, they GD killers. Hell no. Them Mickey Cole, you know damn well they ain't, no. They be right over there on the west side of Chicago with the vice lord. And them blue fin black disciples, they ain't, no. When I leave my video, Whatever you try to get away with, with that nasty, that, that nag my, no. When I leave my video, you can forget that. That's over, trying to get away with that. I'm making that perfectly clear. And then all them white guys, man, that's over. Ain't no need to worry about that. No nag my library, because you're going to see. When you seeing people getting their ass wet up, it's clear, especially them goddamn hoes. Them black disciple hoes. I mean, them black gangster new breed hoes, when you seeing them getting their asses wet up, you see them gangster cyber hoes getting their ass slaughtered out there, running your goddamn mouth, and talking about some damn insane gangster cyber. I tell you what, you gonna see, you gonna see them hoes getting their ass wet up. Gonna clear Chicago, I'm telling you, gonna clear Chicago out. And people in other parts of the country, it's going to be just like Chicago. Just like I told you. When you look down here in Memphis, Tennessee, when you see Chicago got cleared out, they're going to clear this goddamn place out. Because you ain't going to never get away with that. Talking about no damn narcissism, no nag in my lap. Right no. The Demiurge? No, man. So for all them state troopers, the Shelby County, you know, the Sheriff Department, what you thought you got away with, what I'm hearing on the street, that shit you thought you got away with, the police department, what you thought you got away with, man, it ain't no getting away with that. Now, you can put that, you can get you some audio surveillance, some video surveillance. Now, I ain't trying to hurt the God, dog. I ain't trying to hurt the God, dog. I'm trying to hurt your goddamn ass. You and that damn ho sitting up in the house. I'm going to tell you this, man. This is serious. This is serious, man. This ain't no goddamn game. You ain't finna play with me. And then this other, them vice lord, them folk on us, them black prince on, man. Them black disciples, them Mickey Cobra, they ain't hearing that shit all around this country. You can forget it. Talking about the police riding around. Talking about some goddamn... Demiurge. Now, I know the difference. And all them white guys, see, I pay attention, I make sure. It's a difference. See, some of them ancient people, even before the Neo play, because see, what he was studying, he was studying people before him. Plato ain't do nothing on his own. He was listening to people before him. And other people did the same damn thing. They were listening to people before them. 
So this shit been going on a long time. A long time. A long time. And then this that see the Neo Platon, that ain't what they said about the Demiurge. They said the Demiurge was good. It was the Gnostics that said something different. That the Demiurge was evil. See, it's a difference. And I don't want none of them white guys and them white women to be walking around and not pay attention. Because it's a difference when you talk about the Demiurge. And when you when the sorority ever turn and try that shit again, you ain't gonna never see your ass already in trouble now. Yeah, you already on the hit list now. And there ain't no such thing as getting away. There ain't no such thing as getting away trying to run and hide. And you damn sure ain't finna come run up to Chicago. So when I make my video. That's the main thing I want to make clear about the city of Chicago, the history of the city of Chicago. Because, see, I ain't forgot Sam Cooke. See, I ain't forgot about his, his sister and brother came from Mississippi. Their mom and dad moved the family from Mississippi to the south side of Chicago. Sam Cooke's sweetheart, Miss Barbara Cooke, Miss Barbara Campbell Cooke. See, she had a family, too. She had a family too. And then Sam and Barbara had children. They had children. And they got children. Sam, Cook, sister and brother had children. His nieces and nephews. And so on and so forth. But I ain't forget. See, it's important. The highway QC. It's important. What I do, what I do. I make it perfectly clear. You've been lying the whole damn time. And it's going to be payback. It's going to be payback. It's going to get your ass back. It's going to get your ass back. You better believe that. It's going to be payback. No matter how long it takes. It's going to be payback. It's just like some look, some young person in a juvenile detention center walking around talking about a GD. Talking about you a black gangster new breed. Talking about you an insane gangster in sight. I tell you what, you walk your ass outside that door, back on these streets, there ain't nowhere to go but to the graveyard. Because you can't never do that. Never. Never, never walk your, walk your ass on these streets. Nowhere. I'm telling you, it ain't nowhere for you to go to the graveyard. And see, I don't know the white guy in there talking about being folks and all that. Look, first of all, you can't go around lying for that long and be wrong and think you can get away with it. So that's the end of that. That ain't even nothing to talk about. Because that's the point I've been making from day one. But I, my dad, man, I ain't forgot my dad. I ain't no damn way. My granddad and my grandma, no. You ain't finna never disrespect my granddad and my grandma. So I'm going I'm to be sitting right here. It's going to be payback. God damn it. You've been lying the whole goddamn time. So when I see all them white guys and they see me, I'm content. You've been lying the whole motherfucking time. That's all you've been doing is just lying. And you ain't going to never get away with it. Never. And all the Hispanic Latin, I'm going to be walking around. No. Ain't no such thing. Ain't no. No. Hell no. You've been lying the whole goddamn time. Ain't no way. No. It's going to be payback. It's going to be payback. And when you get through with them gangsters of cyber, when you get finished with them damn black gangsters of New Britain, you get finished with them insane gangsters of cyber, like I told you, all that so-called crip gang and all that blood gang, man, and talking about some bloodstone, villain line, you ain't doing them a line because you did the same damn thing. Tried to use and misuse the Nagamata Library tried to use and misuse information. Talking about some demiurge. Well, like I said before, I'm going to say it again. All these white guys and these white girls, it's a difference with the demiurge. You ain't finna never walk your ass around and talk about no demiurge. Never. Never. 
You ain't finna never get away with trying to use and misuse information. Never. Excuse me. I want to say this. Look, the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church, the one and only church, the Roman Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Catholic Church, the Oriental Orthodox Catholic Church is only one church. All Catholic churches are working toward reunification. Irregardless about what council, irregardless, it's only one church, the Catholic Church. That's the one and only church. The official church is the Catholic Church. Scripture and tradition. Now, it's getting late, but let me reiterate about this demiurge. It's not no one doctrine. It's a variety. Now, you got all these, what they call them, Platonic, Neo-Pythagorean, Middle Platonic, Neo-Platonic. And so, and, you know, see a lot of them, their perception, their concept of the demiurge was that was good, was the creator. The so-called Gnostics, now they took the term demiurge, but When you talk about the demiurge from a Gnostic point of view, the Gnostic point of view of the demiurge is that the creator of the material world. You know this. That's what all that stuff talking about, the material world is evil. That's what the Gnostics be saying. That's the reason why <coughs> excuse me, some of these people do stuff and then when they do stuff, they claim that the demiurge, the material world is evil. You're going to get your ass killed on these streets. See, want to make sure. See, this ring I tell the white law in the four, you know, four corner hustle. It's a distinction. It's a different. It's a variety. See, you got to make sure that when you talk about the demiurge, you don't over, you don't overlook what the Nazi tried to claim about this demiurge, and then what the people that's up on this Plato, this Platonic. Stuff Neo Pythagorean about this demiurge. That's what you don't overlook because they try to go around, try to use gangs as a way to spread this Gnostic stuff out on the streets, talking to, on the street corner to people. A lot of black slash African American didn't even have no education, and you had the few who did go to college, who was at these historically black colleges and universities, and then later on went to these other colleges and universities, going around trying to impose this Gnostic stuff with this nag in my library and talking about this demiurge, the material world is evil. But what you didn't do 
And what I know I'm seeing out on the street is that you didn't talk about the Neoplatonic, the Neo, the Pythagorean, and all these other schools with this philosophy. But they say it about the Demiurge. Because that is not, that's not their concept. See, what's going to happen? You're going to get your ass killed, just, just to make it clear. See, this is how you know the Catholic Church is right. This is how you know the Catholic Church is right. You come and come and making up all this stuff, and then you had all this Neo-Pythagorean, Middle Platonic, Neo-Platonic, and Platonic, and all this. What you're talking about, the Catholic Church bring it, it, in the school, theology, and religious studies, Ain't nobody running from you. Ain't nobody running and then trying to come join in with the Neoplatonics and the Platonics and the Neopythagoreans. Nobody trying to join in with you, trying to agree with you. About this Demiurge. And so, this, about the history of the city of Chicago, that right there, is going to be a, that's a serious, serious, serious issue. This demiurge. Now, I got to find, well, let me go read this Russian newspaper. I'm going to end my video. You know, see, that's a serious thing. And see, that's, that's another point I want to make about this Nazi stuff and this Demiurge stuff. See, you shouldn't assume that at colleges and universities all around the world. Because, see, you see, it'd be so much that happens around the world each and every day. And now you have all this colleges and universities around the world. And then you have communication. People are in communicating with any and everybody around the world. Any and everybody is communicating with any and everybody. We got the World Wide Web now. You know, it was what, newspapers? You know how information travels. You know, people use a variety of ways, smoke signals and uh, what? Uh, not just smoke signals, but uh, later on they made mirrors. They used to send signals like that. And then you had people that use musical instruments to send messages to other people. You know, people talk, you know, communicate it by using musical instruments. You know, and uh, then later on, uh, you know, people travel, of course. And so that was, and then, you know, they developed handwriting to communicate. Then it had sign languages, colors, and you know, all this. Then later on came, what, the telegraph. Then from the telegraph, the telephone. Then the telephone, later on, the, uh, the computer. And then now we got the computer. Then from the computer, you know, just the computer, uh, the World Wide Web, and, you know, you got all these different, and then, you know, it's still growing each and every day. And so, all this stuff about the Demiurge and all this stuff about Gnosticism, you know, the Catholic Church had refuted Gnosticism in the first century, first of all. That, that's, that's not even something you need to talk about. See? There's no reason for no sorority, no fraternity. There's no reason for any person 
for a person or persons to even talk to another person or person about Gnosticism. The Catholic Church refuted Gnosticism in the first century. All those other Gnostic, all those other heresies were refuted by the Catholic Church. Including Martin Luther. Including Martin Luther. Proved to be a heretic. Even today. Still being proved as a heretic. And so, it's very, very, very serious when you try to use and misuse the dang of my library. And the information pertaining to the demir, you try to lie. So when it comes to the war in Ukraine, I know that there are people, these American businesses, the American businesses, who got businesses in Russia and Ukraine and some of the other European countries. In some of these other ways that people try to move around. The U.S. military. What we talking about is serious. And when you try to influence people. In the wrong way. As you can see. The result. War. In the Ukraine. As a result. War in Ukraine, not just in Ukraine. Been hearing about things in Sub-Saharan Africa, all over the Sub-Saharan Africa. You see the same thing. From the colon, from colonizers to what you see today. Post colonialism. People in Sub-Saharan Africa continuing. To try to rid themselves of colonialism. And you see the colonialists try to continue to have some kind of influence in South Saharan Africa. But see, it's not just the colonies from Europe, but it's what the people in America do. The imperialists. See, when you try to use the nag of my lab here, just like you're talking about Freemasonry, the Order of the Eastern Star, the occult, The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, Hermetism, Neoplatonism, the Kabbalah, see, in Sub Saharan Africa, see things of their nature. People. are influenced by the esoteric and, on the other hand, Rudolf Steiner and the Waldorf School, exoteric. The war in Ukraine. See, that's where it come from. People all over the world, these colleges and universities, the people in academia, Misleading other people.
go. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take this time to read a bunch of newspaper. Uh, one of them, the Moscow Times, considered to be for 30 years uh, independent news from Russia. All right, let me see here. War in Ukraine. You see, one of the things about the war in Ukraine that should never be overlooked is money. It's been talked about corruption in the Ukraine. And those oligarchs in the Ukraine. So you can't never leave out the number one uh, motive for war. Money. Money. Because what was the people, let's not forget, what was the people in Ukraine saying? They were saying they were pro You know, pro Europe and anti Russia. Now, when you talk like that, and when you direct that at people, when you claim that you want to be friends with Europe, with the European Union and whatever they you know they got this outline what it means to be friends with the European Union and then what do it mean to be anti-Russia now when you say you anti-Russia what make you think that Russia gonna stay, sit idly by and you gonna claim that you don't like Russia. And you 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 don't you know you got an attitude and you wanna get into a fight with Russia. Well it's winter time right now in that part of the world. It's cold. Now in that part of the world, when it's winter time, it's winter. It's winter time, it's cold. Because Ukraine and Russia right there next to each other and that part of the world, Poland, you know, Hungary, and, you know, that part of the world, Eastern, Central, Eastern Europe. When you talk about winter, it's winter time. It's snow. And when it's snow, it's snow. When it get cold, it get cold. It's certain some parts of Russia. It's like in the North Pole. I think one of the coldest places on earth. I, I was watching this documentary one day. It's, it's, a, it's a little community. I think some Altair people. It's a little com it's a community that's right there. I'm talking about one of the coldest places on earth. It's in Russia. Because they, they, all that territory is Russia. One of the coldest places on earth. Rush in Russia. Now, I'm over here on, like I said, I'm reading the Moscow Times. This is a Russian newspaper. Okay, let me see here. Let me see what they say. TikTok 
video was glorifying the Wagner mercenary group viewed by millions. Let me check this out. All right, let me read this article. TikTok kept up hundreds of videos that promote and glorify violent acts allegedly committed by Russian mercenary group Wagner, despite their direct violation of the platform's policies, according to a new investigation by independent misinformation watchdog NewsGuard. NewsGuard's analysts identified as many as 160 clips explicitly depicting or glorifying violent Wagner linked activities on the video sharing app. This includes 29 clips documenting or alluding to the recent execution of ex-Wagner recruit Evgeny Nusin, who was killed by the mercenaries after he defected to Ukraine. One of the execution videos identified by NewsGuard was viewed 900,000 times before TikTok moderators removed, removed it over community guideline violation. And also, as it says, uh, analysts also identified at least 500 other TikTok-based clips justifying Russia's invasion of Ukraine and promoting acts of violence against and murder of Ukrainians. The Wagner Mercenary Group opens tech center in St. Petersburg. All right, let me read that. Clips containing Wagner's Russian language hashtags such as PMC Wagner or PMC Wagner received over 1 billion views combined, while those with, with English language hashtag Wagner Group and PMC Wagner Group were viewed over 6 million, 60 million times, according to the watchdog. Some of the analyzed content contained professionally produced music videos glorifying Wagner and even direct links to the group's recruitment websites. In addition to the content linked to Wagner's activities in Ukraine, NewsGuard found TikTok clips depicting a violent execution of a Syrian citizen allegedly by Wagner mercenaries deployed to Syria. Syrian citizen Mohammed Taha Ismail Al Abdullah was beaten to death by Wagner mercenaries in 2017 in retaliation for his attempted desertion of the Syrian army according to an investigation by the independent Navoya Gazetta newspaper. TikTok kept up at least 130 clips containing the depiction of the execution which were viewed over one million times total. NewsGuard said some of the clips used the 2017 footage to promote Wagner's involvement in the ongoing war in Ukraine and incite violence against Ukrainians. The user guidelines of TikTok, which is owned by China-based company ByteDance, explicitly banned the distribution of content that promotes or incites violence, including those directed at a particular group of people. All right, let me click back over. Let me see here. Russian defense chief calls for next generation weapon used in Ukraine. All right, let 
Anna Marie, that uh, the Russian military should deploy next generation weapons in this campaign in Ukraine, Defense Minister Sergei Sh Shoigu said Wednesday. We need to continue upgrading and creating advanced systems with their subsequent application of special military operations, Shoigu said at a ministerial board meeting. Shoigu did not specify which types of invading weapons system he was referring to or whether this marked a strategic shift in Russia's military campaign in Ukraine. But his remarks follow months of battlefield setbacks that forced Russian troops to withdraw from territories that held in at least three Ukrainian regions. He listed high precision, long range weapons, drones, and counter battery warfare systems as key factors for effectively defeating the enemy. Missile forces and artillery play a significant role in this, Shagu said. Today, we will discuss further steps to build up the combat capability of the missile forces and artillery. Taking into account the experience gained, Russia's defense ministry will focus on building nuclear weapons infrastructure in 2023, Shagu said at the board meeting. Russian President Vladimir Putin has repeatedly hinted at Moscow's nuclear capability as his country's nine month invasion of Ukraine has struggled to achieve lasting successes. Shagu added that 300,000 reserves and volunteers have passed through more than 100 Russian and Belarusian training camps. In the two months since Putin ordered a partial mobilization, funding for state defense orders is expected to increase by 150 percent in 2022 to ensure the armed forces are provided with consistent arms and equipped supplies. He added.
Okay, I was just glancing. I was glancing at the article in the Moscow Times. So, the war in Ukraine. All right, let me read another newspaper, and then I'm going to have to call it. Like I said, I've just been reading the Moscow Times. Now, you know not to read. Don't listen to uh, CNN and Fox. You know not to listen to CNN and Fox. All right, let me click over. Russian news, baby. Let me see here. Uh, what the other one is? Let me double see. I think I might have passed. All right, let me see here, uh, let me see like, uh, all
Now, there's another Russian newspaper, Pravda. So I'm just I'm just glancing at some of the things, seeing if something. Then let me read a quick article here. See? Just a quick article. British mercenary McDonald Frost in Ukraine were a shock for us. Foreign fighters who joined the armed forces of Ukraine were shocked by the snow and frost in Ukraine, said British mercenary Joseph McDonald. The soldier noted that when he left Britain, excuse, birds were still singing and flowers were in full bloom. Therefore, the winter, excuse, therefore the weather in the war zone with knee deep snow and severe frost. Whatever I've been saying this from day from from the, back in the summertime, that winter time was coming. I already knew that winter time was coming came as a complete surprise to him and the rest of the foreign soldiers of, of fortune. We found ourselves in the middle of a real winter. It was a shock for us, McDonough explained. Earlier, the European Parliament warned the European Union countries that with the onset of cold weather in Ukraine, Europe is waiting for a huge wave of Ukrainian refugees. But that was just just arguing. I read the article for that reason. See, this is what I was saying back in the summer. I knew winter time was coming. And I know that in that part of the world, you know, in some places in the part of the world, I mean, you can talk about China or Mongolia, Russia, then Ukraine, Central Europe. When it's winter time, it's winter time. You know, it ain't like Memphis, Tennessee, <laughs> you know. It's December right now. Feel like it's, you know, you know, like springtime sometime outside. We still in the fifties and in, in mid forties. They talking about below in Ukraine and then in Russia.
So I just been reading a few hours from the problem, and then I'm gonna read one more. All right, let me let me close this one. And go to Taz. The Russian news agency. Well, see, like I was <clears throat> one of the, in military strategy, military tactics, casualties. When you inflict casualties on the Ukrainian, see, these politicians here in America talking about they're going to continue to give military aid to the Ukrainians. When you have casualties, trying to replace the ones that are dying, who died in battle. And, you know, the, in the time spent to try to train and, all the, and replace and then train somebody, that takes time. And then who said that you got time to do all that? See, because see, the Russians are advancing. Now, granted, it's winter time. It's winter time right now. And when it's winter time in Ukraine and Russia, you talking about some deep snow. And it's cold. It's cold and it's snow. You know, I'm talking about the snow that'll, that'll cover your car. This is every day. Not just occasional. But this is every day. It's like that. So, when you have a military, you can't use vehicles in the snow. Not like that. It's cold, and then it's cold. Now, let me see. What time? All right, I'm gonna have to go ahead and finish. But
Okay. But like I said, in general, that's what I'm seeing over here on TAB. They showing the casualty of the Ukrainians. So, but, I mean, you know, the whole thing about the war in Ukraine, like in the war, money is a big factor. Just like you see President Zelensky. Money is a big factor. I, I wouldn't be surprised you find some, some money out the treasury in some Swiss bank account somewhere, or you know, somewhere down there, some foreign bank somewhere, where they've been stashing money. But like I said, I've been reading, the first paper I read was the Moscow Times. I read a little bit of the Pravda, and the last paper I read was the Russian News Agency. So, you're ready to end today's video. All right, just mention about the weather. It's raining off and on here in the city of Memphis, Tennessee, and Shepherd County, the state of Tennessee. You've been enjoying the World Cup? It's, it's been pretty interesting. It's been pretty interesting. The U.S. got knocked out. And so, uh, it's pretty interesting. Disappointing that Russia wasn't involved, you know, wasn't able to participate in, in the World Cup. But you know, like, you know, but, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end today's video.
rejecting knowledge. Rejecting knowledge. Rejecting knowledge. Rejecting knowledge. The Catholic Church. There's only one church. The Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church. The Eastern Orthodox Catholic Church. The Oriental Orthodox Catholic Church. There's only one Catholic Church. And that's the one and only church. You're a Catholic. You're a Christian. You're a Christian. You're a Catholic. Scripture and tradition. Don't pay any attention to anybody trying to talk to you out on the street corner or somewhere out on the street on your job, at work, at your place of employment, trying to persuade you through violence. To be a Gnostic. And then claiming you're a Gnostic. Talking about the demiurge is, is God. Talking about the material world is evil. And trying to engage in anal sex. Look. And, and, and then talking about the. the Neo-Pythagoreans. The. Platonist and neo Platonist and middle Platonist and all it. Talking about some demiurge. It's good. You know, you can dress up and try to gloss over. The Catholic Church is right. So, I'm going to go ahead and end today's video. Again, my name is Eric D. Johnson. Also, I'm on Bright Shining right here in the city of Memphis in the county sheriff in the state of Tennessee. Thank all my fans, my support for your continued career support. And uh, I don't know who's going to win the World Cup, but uh, continue to enjoy. And, you know, uh, but until the next time, take care of yourself. Wish each and every one of you the very best.